Now, please, I did a lot of work on this video just to make sure to get it to you guys. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the link to the 100 gigabyte website is in the description below. So go click it so you can look at this stuff for yourself. When I took a look at it, it actually surprised me just how much content was on it. When they said 100 gigabytes, it's like, you don't really know how much that is until you look at it. It's a lot. And the first thing that you see when you get to the website are his three songs, the three brand new songs that he just came out with. These are brand new, never before heard, and I listened to them. The first song that he did was called It's Up. Great song. I love the beat. The production was wonderful. I think his performance was good too. Um, and I, I do think though that 21 Savage did a better job than he does. Um, he does most of the time. And 21 Savage, this beat really felt like it was for him. So it was a good song, but I think 21 Savage took it away. The second song on his website is called Blue, Green, Red. This one was interesting. I think the song, the music, like sonically, it was very pleasing. It sounded very crisp. Like I was expecting a lot of this stuff to be underproduced because it's on some random sketchy website that we've never visited before. Um, I had to make sure my computer didn't get malware. Like I had to be very safe about this, okay? Um, but it was very well produced. It sounded professional. It was it was well done. Um, it was mixed and mastered well. Now, the only thing is, and again, I'm a huge fan of both Drake and Kendrick. However, Drake did something on this song that Kendrick has been accusing him of way back when the this was happening. In the song, you hear Drake transition between his regular voice and a what sounds like a London slash Patois Jamaican kind of accent switching back and forth. When I was listening to this song, it did remind me of what Kendrick Lamar said about him swapping accents. So again, I, I don't hate Drake and or Kendrick or anything like that. I just thought that was funny and it made me remember that. The next song on the list is called Housekeeping Knows. This song was weird. Okay, now the beat was very Jersey Club, right? It, it, it had that flow. And the lyrics were strange. The backing track was like, you know, ride it, ride it like a stick, ride, ride it, girl. And then uh, the, the girl who's supposed to be riding this, the whatever stick was like, oh, daddy, oh, uh, yeah. Mm. And like moaning and stuff, that, that caught me off guard. It was weird. Sexy Red did eventually come up on and to feature in the song later on in the length of the track and it was pretty boring it wasn't anything specifically great about the song it was it was whatever throughout the rest of this 100 gigabyte website i don't quite think you understand just how big and how much content is on this website when you go throughout the rest of these i mean it had to be at least 20 to 30 folders full of at least maybe 10 to 15 other clips and mp4s and files and documents i mean this thing is huge okay and one of the first albums or folders that you see is called two soda or soda and when i looked through it it was it was interesting it was drake previewing a song and he was previewing it and I couldn't quite catch what song it was, but you just saw that he was listening to it and then he would walk up to the microphone in the studio and then walk away from it. You didn't quite know what was going on or what he was about to do. I personally thought he was going to like, I don't know, record some brand new song or something we'd ever heard and, and really present us with something new. But then as I kept going throughout the rest of this folder, I realized, wait a minute, this is from... 2018, this entire folder and, and you know, I get, what is it? Two Soda, Soda is a, is dedicated to the production of Scorpion back from 2018. And I also noticed that his hair was cut. That should have been my first guess that this was old footage. And I decided to just keep looking at it and realize that's that what was happening. They were basically editing, mixing and mastering the rest of, uh, scorpion the the album and it was interesting it, it was it was you know there and i got to see kind of how they built the songs and like mob ties for example they were editing that and and once i got to the end of this folder i realized wait a minute this entire 100 gigabyte website is dedicated to be a documentary piece like pieces of content that would go into something on like netflix or max or uh i don't know like prime video so the second folder in this uh giant 
you know, mess of data was called Soda to Miami Storm. And the title is not an exaggeration. Most, if not all of the clips in this folder are somebody sitting in Miami and recording what looks like a hurricane. Like a, it didn't seem like worthy of a, a, a part in all this. Maybe there's something behind it. Maybe I don't get it. it. Might be a reference. I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. Is that some type of reference I don't know about? Maybe I'm missing something. Then the next folder down is called 40 Keys. So 40 is Drake's producer and they've been together for a while. And the first few clips was 40 playing piano and kind of just having a good time smoking weed. But then once you get nearer to the end of the clips, you start to see that there's actually an interview happening. 40 is being interviewed by somebody behind the camera and they're asking 40 some really interesting and intimate questions about the relationship that he and others have with Drake. Drake's personal relationships are tightly intertwined with his working relationships. Working relationships. Of course, which is why I have a hard time talking about one and not the other. Everybody around him has a, has a role that they play. So they are under his employ. I don't know what the question is. I think it's more just like thinking about like- Well, me and Drake have a little bit of a unique relationship, I would say, in his like whole system that way because we create together, you know? So he's asking him questions regarding their relationship and asking things like, so do you feel like close to him? Are you guys connected? And Forty kind of looked uncomfortable during the length of this interview because it almost seemed like the questions this guy was asking were just strange and off-putting. Forty then goes on to describe how Drake's inner circle are not full of friends. They're full of employees that Drake considers friends, which when you think about it, that's kind of sad. Like you, you go throughout this world and you know, you try to have a pocket of friends, maybe one, two, three, or four, and then you kind of hang out with them. And you know, there's no money being involved here. There's no fiduciary responsibilities between two parties. But with Drake, Forty explained how most of his friends are just employees. And Drake basically pays them to be present in his life and around him. And, you know, whether or not they're doing work, we don't know. But there is a money exchange happening between the, the parties. And so I thought that was kind of sad. I, I kind of felt bad for Drake when I thought that maybe a lot of his life really just revolves around work. And he has no friends and no interest outside of just being a musician. And, and Forty kind of revealed that. And that was kind of crazy. The next folder was called six. And throughout the rest of this like website, you begin to realize that, wow, this really is a documentary piece that he is building because a lot of the footage that we're gonna talk about next are so old. I'm talking like 2015, 2014, and 2009, like way back in the day. This particular folder called six was him doing concerts and kind of going around and having these old pieces of footage where he was in these, these concerts as a young man when he was in his like, you know, early to mid twenties. So I thought that was interesting. And it was just the beginnings of Drake. That is a large portion of these files is showing us and giving us a window into who Drake was before he got super, super big. This is where I have to kind of interject and tell you this, this might turn out bad for Drake. So first of all, I told you earlier that Kendrick Lamar made some comments about Drake and his character and not just about him swapping accents, but also him swapping like religions. And it's weird because there was a clip in this folder where Drake was doing like a behind the stage prayer. A lot of artists do this before a show. And when he did this prayer, he ended the prayer with- Now most importantly, let's go do the work that you need us to do. In your name we pray, amen. 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 In his name we pray, amen. Now, I thought that was strange because I thought Drake was Jewish. Now, he may not be a practicing Jewish man, but I I'm not aware of Jewish people um, praying and ending the prayer uh, in the name of Moses or Abraham. So I thought it was weird that Drake decided to do that. But then again, I thought back to Kendrick Lamar speaking on how Drake likes to shift his religion and perspectives and ideologies. And I was like, wow, Kendrick was kind of right again. Like he did it again. He's, he's right. I'm like, he's doing a Christian prayer and it, it just seems strange. I'm like, well, what is going on? And I'm promising you this right now. Somebody's gonna use this against Drake. The last part of this that I thought was strange and maybe actually dangerous for the OVO crew is 
Further down into some of the files, you find that somebody is holding a cellular device recording what looks like a strip club that OVO hosted. Now, at first it looked kind of, you know, normal. It's just a bunch of women who I believe were exotic dancers picking up money at the end of a good night. But there was the guy behind the camera who was like harassing the women. Put the chicken nugget in your mouth. Like it's a dick. No, nobody want no alcohol. They want some alcohol. And berating them. I wouldn't give that bitch a bottle of water right now. She, that's her right there. Butay, watch out, uh, DJ. What you want to drink, Butay? And calling them names. See, y'all the type of women that be like, I'm about to come. And niggas just be fucking the shit out of you, and you ain't coming yet. He like, damn, bitch, yeah. I'm about to come. I'm about to. And, and I started feeling this sense of like, oh, no. I have a strange theory that this footage might end up being used in court. Because the way he was talking to these women was like, yo. The women seem okay with it, but you know how that is. Like, you know, you're in an interaction and you act like you're okay with it, but it's like really uncomfortable and it's just strange. The guy just seemed really off-putting. And the way he talked to the women was really off-putting. And I have a feeling that some of the clips throughout the entire website in 100 gigs might be used against Drake and against OVO. Because again, a lot of the things that Kendrick was saying about Drake were proven in these clips and in these videos, right? His changing perspectives, his changing accents. That was already gonna be a problem. But now with these clips of this guy who's like, what looks like harassing these women, I don't know, man. I, I'm really concerned that Drake did something here that he thinks is gonna help his image or perspective but it actually might end up hurting him in the long run and it might be a problem for his overall image. I can tell he's trying to build a documentary. This is a really weird way of doing it. I'm not sure why he did it this way. And disappointingly, no, there are no more songs. There are no more MP3s throughout the rest of the 100 gigs. It's just the three songs at the very top of the website. Sorry to break it to you. No Kendrick diss, no more responses. That was basically it. So if you wanna check it out again, go check the link in my description. It has the entire website with all the data. And please, I did a lot of research for this video. If you could just hit the like button, it helps this video, and you don't have to pay a dollar to me. You don't have to pay a dime, it's free. And also hit the subscribe button if you want more deep dives like this. Anyway, love you guys, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day, a better tomorrow. God bless, I'll see you all later.